If you've seen my recent posts on Twitter, you probably know I'm not a humongous fan of Marvel's PlayStation Spider-Man 2. Now this is to say, a lot of what I don't like about it is simply taste. The black suit Spider-Man story is like my least favorite Spider-Man story. So without giving too many spoilers, if over the course of your game, it becomes more and more and more and more a black suit Spider-Man story, I'm probably not going to like it. And yeah, I think in general, the way Craven was handled, he was cool, but all of his goons were weird. And I was very tired by like halfway through the game of being thrown into a room with 50 Craven goons and having to fight 50 Craven goons in a small room where I couldn't really swing around very much and then having to go and fight more and then one shows up with an axe, whatever. But like I said, these things are all taste. These are things I did not love, but other people who like those things would like. And I would say on a technical level, this is all executed very well. And as a fan of the comic books who's read some of these stories and is familiar with certain aspects of stories and how they've been kind of molded to fit into this larger narrative, I think some of that's very clever. I also really like the character design. I think Craven's design is fantastic. I think Venom is pretty cool looking. I think Lizard was great. And swinging and flying, all that stuff is so much fun. However, there's one aspect of this game that I just flat out think didn't work. And I think it's kind of strange because it's something that theoretically were it to be removed from the game, it would solve a couple of problems. So here's my number one thing I didn't like about Spider-Man 2. With Miles Morales come Miles' other spider powers. He can do big electricity blasts and he's also invisible, a power I could not stop forgetting he had in this game. Every so often I would accidentally render my character invisible and go, oh right, he can do invisible stuff. But either way, Miles brings those powers to Spider-Man 2 and he is a playable character along with Peter Parker Spider-Man. Peter Parker Spider-Man brings all his powers from the Spider-Man 1 game. See, the problem is, Miles already has all the powers Peter had in Spider-Man 1, and he has a bunch of other powers. So to compensate, what they give Peter is the spider arms. The Iron Spider Superior Spider set of four prehensile arms that I believe are explained in the games as being inspired by Dr. Octopus. And Peter uses these arms to do big super moves, and it even gives him a skill tree that matches Miles' Venom skill tree. So you always feel like you're on, or on the same level with either of them. They can both kind of do the same things through different means. And I don't think it's completely unrealistic that the Spider-Man would have these robot arms or anything like that. I think as far as they're integrated into the game, they're fine. I think it's a little weird that he would make them after Dr. Octopus did arms last game and that was a whole big mess. Kind of reminds me of that Arrested Development bit where Tobias says, I mean, those people somehow delude themselves into thinking it might, but, but it might work for us. And it's kind of Peter with these arms. However, overall, I don't think they added very much to the gameplay. And using them instead of using like fun acrobatics or even some of the spider gadgets from the original game, it did feel like we're sacrificing some of what I would call like essential Spider-Man for a gimmick to keep up with Miles. I find it especially annoying though, because when we get the symbiote suit, that becomes the new thing. The skill tree that was once for the spider arms now is for the symbiote. And the tendril attacks take the place of all the spider arm attacks. And I think one of the problems with a story like this, especially when it is a video game that I have to play, is that if I have to do lots and lots of boss fights and fight waves of bosses, and then Spider-Man gets his big upgrade in this symbiote suit, and it doesn't feel that different, it's a little upsetting, right? Like Spider-Man says, oh my god, so much power, it's incredible. And every so often you do get moments where you're like, that was a really, really, really good move. But overall, I wouldn't say the symbiote suit is a humongous improvement over the Iron Spider legs. And it does really make me wonder, why not kill two birds with one stone? Why not not have the iron spider legs in the first third of the game at all? Just have Peter play as Peter, the agile, kind of gadget-obsessed Spider-Man, who is trying to keep up with Miles, this new Spider-Man who has all of his powers, plus a bunch of extra ones that are honestly together kind of better than the Spider-Man powers. And Peter's barely keeping up, and there's all these new threats, including this hunter who seems to know that Peter is the weaker of the two Spider-Mans. Maybe he's going to go after Peter first. Peter's like, I need to keep up with these guys. I just can't do anything. And maybe even when you're playing as Peter, there's just a big empty space, right, where the Miles buttons go for like electricity stuff and there's just nothing there and you feel that as the player like man spider-man peter parker is less good than spider-man miles morales and then you get that symbiote suit and oh look now we have a skill tree and now we have extra powers and things we can use to take down big waves of goons like i think from a gameplay perspective it makes the gameplay better makes it more focused and from a storytelling perspective it helps put you in peter's shoes one of my problems with the black suit spider-man story is Peter Parker definitely feels a certain way. Part of it is because of how his life is going and all that, but part of it is also just the suit makes him more powerful, makes him more angry, makes him more impulsive. And with this, 
Unless the game forces us to feel like that, it's really hard to get on board with the other black suit symbiote stuff, right? Like if Peter is more violent, he just becomes more violent and he says, oh, I'm being so violent. It's like, all right, well, don't, you know, I'm not having fun being more violent. You just keep saying you are. This isn't working for me. But if we get a bunch more powers that makes the gameplay a lot more fun and Peter Parker is more violent and then characters are saying, Peter, you're so violent. And Peter's like, well, listen, this is just what I have to do. And I have all this new power now. And now everybody's like, oh, Peter Parker, why aren't you playing like you used to? And it's like, I'm as good as everybody else. And now everybody's telling me I can't be as cool. Like, I don't think getting rid of the Iron Spider arms would totally solve this problem. But I do think in a story like this, especially a story where every Spider-Man fan basically knows where this is going to end up, right? Like Peter is going to become just almost too corrupted by the black suit. He's going to rip it off very dramatically and have a moment where he cries. I'm so sorry, everybody. It certainly feels like what you need to really, really, really do is make me not at every single moment go take off the suit, take it off. It's not good to have on Peter Parker. This is dumb that we're using this to do this. This is dumb that we're getting in fights with everybody. I do think the symbiote powers are better than the Iron Spider powers, but they should be so much better that for us, the player, it is a no brainer. Keep the suit on and whatever these, you know, consequences are, these things that are coming out, it's anger and maybe, you know, killing villains and stuff like that. I'm like it's a sacrifice we got to make, but look at how much better we are at fighting. I do think it's a problem that has to come with balance and trying to balance these two different characters, Spider-Man, Peter Parker, and Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and balancing gameplay so you really can switch between each character and play relatively the same game. Like, I think going into Miles should be the easier way to go into a level. Going into Peter should be the weaker way. But then when you get the symbiote suit, tables turn. Besides that, the game's pretty good, but it's just not for me. I honestly haven't even finished it yet. We've got a lot more stuff to do, and the story just became very symbiote heavy, which I'm not, I'm not thrilled about. But I will say, from a gameplay perspective, the one thing that really stuck out to me is these spider arms. Not only do they not need to be there, but if they were not there, it would make some of the symbiote stuff feel a little bit more justified. So that's all I got. I'll see you next time.